Today, there are a lot of people here, and I would like to recognize a couple people before we get started. We have Senator Brady, we have Representative Cassidy, to your last visit to Baywib. <laughs> With that being said, Mayor Bill Carpenter has been leading the city of Brockton since January 2014. A long-term resident of the city, Mayor Carpenter has taken action to jumpstart economic development. Interested in technology to support public safety, stabilization, na stabilized neighborhoods, and founded Independence Academy, a recovery high school for Southeastern Mass. Mayor Bill Carpenter. I'm going to be very brief, but I want to welcome the Secretary and the Lieutenant Governor here to Brockton. It's great to have both of you here today uh, for this exciting day. What I, one thing I'll just share with you, how important um, Bay with Mass Hire now is to a city like Brockton, particularly a gateway city like Brockton. It's where, this is where, you know, education and labor come together and create skilled, trained employees that we need. And a big piece of our economic development, we cannot bring additional companies into Brockton if we're not able to provide them with skilled employees to work in their businesses. And that's one of the first things employers look for. And particularly in Brockton, you know, for those of you that know the city, there are a lot of hardworking people here. We've got a great labor pool of really hardworking people. But a lot of those hardworking people don't really have the marketable job skills to earn a living wage in today's economy. And so that's the opportunity that's created here. The opportunity that's created here is someone who is hardworking uh, can gain a job skill that doesn't just get them, you know, a dollar an hour raise in minimum wage, but actually gets them a, a career and income that they can support their family on, it's for their family with, and, and create a, a better quality of life for their family. So, Sheila, we appreciate so much everything you and your team do here for the city in terms of providing people with opportunities. And it's, it's a real pleasure for me to be here today uh, to join in the celebration of the creation of Mass Hire. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Eric Heller first joined the Donahue Institute in 1985, launching his Applied Research and Program Evaluation Group in 2011, Dr. Heller became the Institute Deputy Director. Cur currently the Interim Executive Director, Dr. Heller received a doctorate and master's in educational policy, research, and administration from UMass Amherst. He has earned his Bachelor's Degree of Arts in Education and Sociology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Dr. Eric Heller, please join us. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Polito and Secretary Acosta and Mayor Carpenter and colleagues and friends, Sheila, members of the board, it is truly an honor to be here today. Uh, I'm here representing the University of Massachusetts, representing the University of Massachusetts Donahue Institute, you heard, I've been stuck there since 1985. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell the mayor, I am particularly proud to be here as the son and grandson of past Brocktonians. I couldn't be prouder. I never <laughs> Father's kosher, kosher butcher shop was right down the street on Crescent Street. Yeah. Yeah, there's housing there, and that's what fortunately got him to retire. Actually, yeah. urban renewal it was called. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, on behalf of the University of Massachusetts, we're so thrilled to be here and part, be part of this incredible milestone. I, I think I can explain to everyone why this is so important. Those of us on the inside, and by the inside I mean the board, the career center, the state. We've always known we're part of a statewide system. 
It's been very, very clear to us. I truly applaud the administration for the, the insight and the, and the vision to recognize that maybe on the outside it wasn't always quite as clear. You know, did we know uh, when we went to Future Works out in the West that we were going to something that was connected to Career Works in Brockton? Mm -hmm. and, and the branding and the unifying of this system under one coherent, clear, really well-branded uh, name and, and, and recognition is, is a, such an important step forward for everyone involved in what is truly a critically important enterprise, serving the employers, serving the residents of the entire state. So again, we, we are very, very proud of our involvement here in Brockton. Uh, for, for those that don't know, the University of Massachusetts and the Donahue Institute has been the operator of the Career Center here since the day it opens its doors, Sheila? 2012. Uh, <laughs> I'll say close to 20 years ago, correct? <laughs> and, and we look forward to continuing what is truly, I think, a remarkable partnership that we have with the Greater Brockton Mass Hire. Uh, no, so Mass Hire always goes first. Mass Hire, <laughs> Greater Brockton. So John Murray, the director of our center, and our staff who are here, I'm just going to offer a suggestion, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going on record personally. <coughs> I'm fining myself every time I say BayWib or Career Works, <laughs> and, and, and I'll figure out where, where it's going to go. It'll go someplace That's good. That's another grant. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we will get used to the words, and we, 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 truly, like we truly embrace them. So congratulations to everyone involved. The state, working with people making Massachusetts a great place to live, to work and to raise a family. She chairs the Community Compact Cabinet and focuses on elevating administration's local partnerships. Since the program's inception, Lieutenant Governor Polito has signed a compact with every one of 351 states, uh, cities, I'm sorry, uh, in the town of Massachusetts, uh, covering a total of 835 best practices. You're a busy lady. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Governor serves as co-chair of the STEM Advisory Council and works hard to ensure that all students have access to comprehensive STEM education. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor Polito began her public service in local government serving as member of the Shrewsbury Board of Selectmen in 2001 and was elected state representative for five terms. Please welcome Senator Polito. <laughs> to be here uh, in this room with so many uh, people coming for this celebration. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Secretary Acosta for her leadership and, and understanding uh, that exactly what Dr. Kella had outlined, that internally you knew how this all connected and how work it worked, but externally, how could we make it a more uniform and easy experience for the customer, for the person who has to come in and figure out uh, how to reskill, how to connect to a job, uh, and, and as an employer, how to find the talent you need for your workplace. And I think perhaps it's it's the outside uh, view that you came from, your, your private sector experience uh, in finance and in banking, and then coming in from the outside and, and looking at this with a fresh set of eyes. So thank you for your leadership, and to your whole team. I think there are a lot of people from, from your office, either here locally or from the executive office, and I want to thank all of you because it seems so easy. We just we just renamed it and rebranded it. It was so hard <laughs> to do, and uh, we know that it took a lot of focus, a lot of research, a lot of work, uh, day to day on the details, coordinating all of the different uh, stakeholders uh, to get to one. I think from 45 to one. Um, over a, a relatively short period of time uh, to make this happen. So to everyone in this room, you're here because you had a role to play in this, and uh, we congratulate and we thank you. I uh, want to thank my partners in government, uh, Mayor Carpenter. Uh, you, you work 24-7. I follow you on Twitter, and you're, you're going around and around the city and doing amazing work, and you bring the energy needed to help lift the city up every single day. It's a treasure. 
that you have here, and we are proud and honored, uh, Charlie Baker and I, to work alongside of you and your team at City Hall. And to my colleagues in the legislature, having served uh, in the House of Representatives uh, for 10 years, uh, to see uh, Representative Cassidy, who I swore, swore into office, and Representative Cronin uh, rise up to leadership positions. And uh, Senator, never forget you were once a House member, yeah. now Senator. <laughs> um, it's great to, to see you uh, working so hard for this region. And I, I love uh, coming together and, and working with all of you. So today, uh, for, from our point of view, represents a few things. Uh, yes, it's a one-stop shop, place to go, connecting uh, people uh, both on the employer side and the, the workforce side uh, to what they need, whether it's someone already working that wants to reskill and plug into the innovation economy or someone that is coming into employment, uh, going to be graduating from school or looking to graduate from high school. In fact, I met a very important person on my way in. His name was Christian. He is the most well-dressed man in the room. <laughs> <laughs> he has a tuxedo on. I said, you show up to work like this every day? He goes, oh, no, just for you, ma'am. For you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and, and, Christian, are you in the room? And he said, and who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. But I said, Christian, uh, what are you doing today? He says, well, I'm volunteering. And I wanted to make this a special event. And I'm, I'm working to get my GED. So he is absolutely connected to the right place. And if you're an employer, <laughs> if you're an employer in the room, I'd go uh, figure out what his next step is. Uh, maybe it's in your workplace. But I think this represents a few things. It is absolutely workforce development. Workforce development is key. It's the lifeblood to our to our economy. People with the right skills connecting to the jobs that exist today, or jobs that will come in our future because there are more startups happening here, more companies want to be here in Massachusetts, and more are, are expanding here in Massachusetts. Why? Because of the tech. There he is. <laughs> Check him out. for sure, and I can't emphasize it enough how critical it is for the success of our economy everywhere. That's why what I love about the rebrand is that you are everywhere in this commonwealth. So now you're going to be more accessible and more known to the people who need to know you. Uh, on the workforce front, I do chair the STEM Council, and the STEM Council has networks all throughout the state, and I'm thrilled uh, to state that we are uh, launching our first statewide STEM week. Uh, beginning October 22nd, and it will go through October 26th. And it's working with all of our uh, career centers uh, and, and mass hire centers throughout uh, the Commonwealth. So that direct connection between what's happening in K through 12, community colleges, higher education, and also uh, employers in each region. So fantastic. This is also <coughs> economic development. The whole key uh, here in the Commonwealth, while we invest in places and in cities, and, and do what we need to regarding infrastructure and, and what's needed for more development. People are our biggest asset in this commonwealth. Always have been, always will be. So we need to make sure that the people graduating fr from our schools have the ability to connect to work. And through you is, is a large uh, part of how they will become successful in connecting to the jobs and careers that are meaningful to them and meaningful to the economy in each region. And finally, this is community development. I have visited every city and town in this commonwealth, and what makes a strong community? Think about that. Think about where you live. Think about this city. What makes a strong community are a few things. First of all, you need great schools, okay? Good schools, neighborhood schools, places that our kids can go and get the education and learn what they need to, to be successful in life. We have the best schools in the nation here, tops on reading and math now seven years in a row, and I've got a new MCAS round that's coming out to hold our whole system accountable to make sure that we achieve the highest standards in terms of education. So schools are important in every community. And a good livable community, healthy, safe uh, community for people to live in and, and raise their families and for businesses to be able to locate in that they feel like they live in a safe community. And that the other piece is that job piece, that opportunity for people to be able to 
to work at a job, to have a career that they can wrap their lives around and earn a good living in this commonwealth. That job piece is so critical to a strong community. And so that's what we celebrate today, economic development, workforce development, and that community development. And it's all, it's all right here, it's sort of wrapped up in what's now called mass hire, but it's really about the work that you do in every one of these centers, connecting people uh, to jobs and careers and opportunity. So let's just leave on that one, one word as the secretary uh, speaks and, and closes this out, but that word opportunity is really, I think, what drives every one of us here today uh, to do the work that we do here in this Commonwealth. So congratulations. Uh, for Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. As Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development in Massachusetts, Secretary Rosalind Acosta leverages her passion to make the world a better place. <laughs> it actually is the shortest one. <laughs> uh, prior to joining the administration, Secretary Acosta spent over 30 years in the banking industry um, and is known for her ability to drive positive performance outcomes aligned with company missions. She has been the, named the Boston's most influential women by women of the Harvard Club and Get Connected 100 Most Influential People of Color in Boston, to name a few. Involved in many civic and community endeavors, Secretary Acosta is recognized leader, public speaker, and cultural ambassador on matters of diversity, motivating youth, and Latino leadership. Please welcome Secretary Acosta. What a historic day for Brockton. First we get 121 Main Street, and then we get Mass Hire, which is the real party here today, all right? So uh, I am so grateful for everyone here. Mayor, thank you for inviting us to this beautiful city to celebrate uh, this momentous day. Uh, Representative Senator, thank you very much for, for having us here. Lieutenant Governor, having you here just makes it all that more special. We, we started launching our Mass Hire uh, brand uh, back on August 29th uh, with the governor in Fall River. And since then, this is our number 11 launch. Uh, we still have five more to go. We're uh, doing 16, we have 16 workforce um, investment boards. So we are doing the 16 regions, but we have 29 career centers. And I don't want it to be lost uh, on what both Dr. Heller said and, uh, and Lieutenant Governor that 45 different names. And I have been in the private sector my entire life. Uh, this is my first public sector job and I joined uh, the administration, I had the honor of joining the administration in July of last year. It's been the best, most fun job I have had by far. Uh, so it's been a, an incredible to be able to serve the Commonwealth. Um, but I'll tell you that as an employer, and there are many of you here today, and I thank you because without you we could not do any of this. Um, I had no idea. I had no idea that we had such a rich public workforce system throughout the Commonwealth, and I've been hiring for over 20 years. And I'm sorry, but I've never used a career center. I kind of didn't know you were here. So uh, when, I, when I did join, um, uh, join the administration, this effort had already been started. It was already underway. Uh, and what I realized real quickly was we got to make this happen. This has got to be accelerated because I didn't know. I had no idea that we had 29 career centers and, and then 16 workforce investment boards that oversee those career centers. What are we going to do about that? So I'll tell you a lot of people, a lot of people um, joined in this effort. And I really want to thank Sheila for her leadership here uh, in Brockton, because uh, you really led the way here in Brockton. And you were an enthusiastic leader of this brand from day one. So thank you. <laughs> Any of us that have ever been involved in branding, you know, although I think this is gorgeous, uh, you know that it's not just about slapping a name on a, on a, on a, on a billboard or on a, on a door. These elements here that you see on the side had to come into play first. 
we had to figure out, why are we doing this? Why are we even here? What's our purpose? What's our mission? And then, real importantly, what are the values that we represent? Now, I'll tell you that I've gone through to so many of the career centers, almost all of them throughout Massachusetts, and all of them embody these values, but they have never been comprehensively articulated and put into a way that we can speak about it in a very consistent way. And that's what branding is about. You want to make sure that the same experience that we get here in Brockton, you get on the Cape and that you get in the Berkshires. We want to make sure that when our folks, whether it's an employer or a job seeker, walk through that door, they have the same feeling. And you know, we spend an awful lot of time in our office talking about a lot of different things, but uh, the things that we talk about a lot are, number one, the economy. We talk a lot about what's going on in the economy. Uh, we talk a lot about, yes, it's great right now. We've got a tight labor market and it's 3.5% unemployment. That's an average. Remember, averages are averages. It's not the same in every region, and it's certainly not the same for people of color. Uh, although our unemployment rate uh, for blacks and Latinos have reduced greatly uh, during the Baker Polito administration. Um, but we all know that we have to do better. We think a lot about those things, and what are we going to do when the economy softens? We have to think about that, mm -hmm. and we have to make sure that our infrastructures are ready. We have to make sure that the foundational things that we're doing every single day are ready for a softening of the economy. What else do we talk about? What everybody else is talking about? Robots going to come in this room right now and take you all away, <laughs> because the automation is going to is going to take all your jobs away. Well, we can't think that that's not going to happen. <coughs> we do know it is going to happen to a certain extent. And if you look at so many reports out there uh, about, you know, what's the percentage of jobs that are going to be gone by 2030? Um, depends on who you believe. Uh, McKinsey says anywhere from 25 to 40 percent. Uh, some others a little more are a little more negative about that. But you know what? I look at that as an opportunity. I look at that as, and maybe I am just uh, obnoxiously optimistic, uh, but I look at that as an opportunity to reskill our folks. I look at that as, as an opportunity to change culturally, working with our folk, uh, folk schools and our community colleges and our universities to make sure that we are always invoking a spirit of lifelong learning versus, okay, got that certificate, done, never have to look at a book again. I'll tell you a quick story. About five years ago, I was in banking and, um, and I had been in the wealth business for 12 years uh, and, and never needed my security licenses. Didn't need that because banks are exempt from security licenses, except when your bank decides to become a brokerage firm. So our bank decided to become a brokerage firm, now I need my security licenses. And guess what? I had to get, because I was managing all of New England, I, had a, I was a manager, so I needed to get my supervisory license, my 24, my 7, and my 66. For any of you that know anything about security licenses, <laughs> that is painful. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and oh, by the way, I had to do it in about 10 months. And oh, by the way, if you don't pass, sorry, you're no longer able to be in this job. You know what? Life changed under my feet. And the only thing that got me through was what got me here ain't gonna get me there. I know I need to keep learning. And so I'll stress that to everyone here. You just have to keep learning. Curiosity and, and knowing that at some point in your life, our economy is changing so quickly. You're gonna have to reskill. No matter how many gray hairs we have, we're still gonna have to learn something new. We always have to learn something new. I have lots of them, but I cover them, so. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I'm very proud of our team and the work that's, that's been done here. This is hard work. This has been hard. You know, for many of us, we think, oh, this is such, so easy. I mean, of course, this makes so much sense. Just rebrand. Of course, you can't have 45 different names and be known for something. You need to have one name. Of course, that's easy, except that in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, all of our workforce investment boards are run locally. You have the power. You have the influence. We can only persuade you that this is a really good idea. And we had to do that with 45 different bodies. And you, 45 bodies of people, not bodies like people, like 45 boards. So you know how difficult that is that to get anyone to change. And change is, change is hard. Uh, change is hard, but you all embrace it here in Brockton, and we really appreciate it. And one of the things that I've loved so much about going around the state is hearing the stories of all of the 
really great work being done locally, uh, whether it's our friends at Hampton uh, working with our evacuees from Puerto Rico, and they've done so much great work there, whether it's here in Brockton where you work with so many disabled folks and so many veterans, uh, and you served over 6,000 people that have come through your doors. That's what this is all about. That's what Mass Hire is all about. So I want to congratulate Sheila and your team because you've done a fabulous job, and I know you have a lot of color-coded candies down there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so thank you all very much for coming today. I am confident that this is going to work. I am confident in, in, in the success of Mass Hire because of the team that we have here. And I just, real quickly before I go, I just want to shout out to a few people from my team that have been instrumental to get this done. Without them, it would not have happened. Under Secretary Jen James on the floor. Um, <laughs> Our director of the Department of Career Services, Mass Hire Department of Career Services, Al Sweeney in the back. <laughs> Jess Moradian, our legislative director and deputy chief of staff. <laughs> and the woman that dealt with all the font sizes and colors and all of that, Marina uh, Jakrakova, and she was not here, unfortunately. She's on her way to Madrid for a wedding. <laughs> So now I'm going to get off my uh, soapbox here, and we are going to show you a video. And this video is going to illustrate a little bit more clearly how this icon came to be. Thank you, Secretary Costa. Um, Sheila Sullivan, Jordan, Executive Director. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to welcome you and uh, make sure that you have an opportunity to see some of the activities that we have going on here. Some of our CNA graduates uh, will be taking blood pressure rate, uh, pulses upstairs uh -oh. in the healthcare lab. <laughs> we also have a virtual welding tool if you'd like to experience a little bit of a new career. I actually wanted to go there after trying it, so by all means, please, uh, please have a, an opportunity. On the first floor, uh, with our partner, the Career Center, we have all of our WIOA partners there to tell you a little bit about what they're doing and how they're complementing our mass hire message. We also have our youth works on the lower level. Please make sure you get a chance to see them. They've been working all week on, well actually much longer than a week, but they've been working very hard on putting together exhibits so that you'll get an understanding and a breadth of different um, programs and services that they offer. So, and of course, there is a concession stand on our lower level, just follow the aroma of the popcorn. Um, and we do, again, I just wanted to welcome you. And as we present and raise our curtain. <laughs> joining us today. Uh, I hope this brings a little bit of better understanding of what we do here. Um, Sheila and her team are fantastic and hopefully you can stick around and take some of the tours and have at it. Thank you. Thank you very much.